So I recently got back from a trip to Rome, Italy. My husband took me for my 40th birthday, and I just couldn't pinpoint one topic that I wanted to talk to you about today. So I figured we'd just talk about a few things. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Italy, some of the things I noticed there specific to animals, and I also want to talk to you today about HPP foods. If you're not familiar with that, stick around. We're going to talk all about it, and mushrooms for our pets. So let's get into it. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, I'm going to start off with the, I guess, fun, quote unquote, topic, and that is that my husband took me to Rome for my 40th birthday. It was so sweet of him to do that. We had we had a good time. I'm really glad we went. I'm glad I saw all the things and um, we, you know, did all of the touristy things in Rome. I did notice, and I, I wanted to just tell you, because I did a couple of reels while I was there specific to the artwork. There's a lot of artwork in in Italy and Rome and it, it's ancient obviously. Everything there is ancient, which is pretty darn cool. Um but I as I was going through some of the museums and places we went, I was finding the dogs and the cats. Like I don't know that's just what my eye does. I'm like, okay, it's boring if it doesn't contain a dog or a cat. <laughs> includes, you know, wolves and lions and tigers and, you know, big cats, all of the things. So I kind of took pictures of the different artwork that had cats and dogs in it. And that's what I created reels on. So that was fun for me. Uh, but I did notice that dogs were everywhere in Italy. It was pretty incredible. Like literally everyone was walking their dog everywhere all the time. Some of the more touristy spots, there were fewer dogs. Um, but I mean, everywhere we went, there were just loads of dogs being walked. It was really cool. I think Italians really love their dogs. Um, there isn't a whole lot of green space in Rome, at least where we were. You kind of had to go outside of the city of Rome to get to any green space. So there were a couple of different parks and things where people would take their dogs, but dogs are, I mean, it's, their life to be on concrete, which is a little, like, I didn't love that but just because of everything I have studied and all of the things I know. But, you know, most people don't understand. Dogs and people, we need to touch the earth. We need to be connected with the earth. Um, so that made me a little bit sad, but it was really cool to see just how many, like, everybody there has a dog. Very unfortunately, everybody there also smokes. So it also concerned me the amount of cigarette smoke that these animals are uh, being subjected to because, I mean, every freaking body there smokes. And I don't understand it. There are um, warnings, huge warnings that take up the whole backside of a carton of cigarettes that tell you you're going to die. And um, they're they're still doing it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that's all about. But um I did come back from Italy with the virus that we can't talk about. I don't know. Can we talk about it yet? Can we say the word COVID? I have no idea. I, it took two and a half years. I never got it. My husband got it. Um, I took care of him while he had it. I never got it. Uh, of course, we go to Italy and I get it. Um, I imagine that is just because of the differences and the strains and and. Also, the stress of traveling. For me, traveling is very stressful. I'm very much a homebody. I very much love to be comfortable and in my environment. So traveling is very stressful for me, both emotionally and physically. I feel very, very physically stressed um, just in the process of traveling. On our way back, our flight was canceled, uh, the first flight. So they had to rebook all of our flights. We were on standby. I've never flown standby before. So that was very like emotionally exhausting for me. And I think that kind of played into 
um, getting sick. But let's let's go talk about something a little bit different. It's not all about me. I don't want to constantly talk about me, but I do know, you know, I want to bring you guys into my life a little bit because that is what makes things interesting. So there are two things really that I wanted to talk to you about this week. And I, I felt like I could put them both into one episode. We don't need to make huge episodes on either one of these topics. I just wanted to cover them with you and kind of let you know these things are top of mind for me. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. So for those of you who have been following me for any length of time, you know I am, I absolutely, I have, a, I have different veterinarians and pet professionals that I follow for different things. And I, I just don't think you're gonna be able to get all of the information you need from one source. I really like to diversify the sources that I have. And Dr. Will Falconer is a veterinarian. He's actually more of a homeopath now um, and has been for a while. He studied homeopathy, but I would consider him uh, more of a holistic slash homeopathic veterinarian. He is retired, but he does do a lot of uh, stuff online still. Now he quit Facebook a couple of years ago. So he's not top of mind for most people uh, just because he's not really very uh, what do I want to say? He's not very active on social media. He doesn't appreciate the, you know, pay to play aspect. And I get that. I don't either. Um, but he has his following and I am part of it because I really, I, I, I like his take on a lot of topics. And one of them is HPP foods. So I'm just, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but uh, he was recently involved in one of the pet summits, which if you know, or if you're familiar with pet summits, they routinely do different summits where they get one like primary speaker who puts together uh, a, a list of other speakers to all talk about one topic. And he was in the raw, I think it was the raw dog food summit. I know Dr. Connor Brady was in it, Dr. Judy Morgan. Um, there were lots of different speakers in this particular summit. And this was, this is from his, the download that he provided. And it really put into words my thoughts on HPP foods for dogs and cats. So HPP, it, there, there's actually it, a few different ways of saying this. It's high pressure pasteurization. So pasteurization, you may be familiar with, most familiar with in uh, dairy milk, right? It's basically killing all of the bacteria, good and bad. So the process goes by a few different names, high pressure pasteurization or HPP, hydrostatic high pressurization, HHP, high hydrostatic pressure pasteurization, HHPP, and ultra high pressure processing, UHP. So either way, whatever you want to call it, whatever a company calls it that they, that they use, they're killing bacteria with extremely high pressure once the product has been packaged. So it's already in the packaging and then they're using high pressure to kill all of the bacteria. And this kills all of the bacteria, good and bad. Um, and it's also really important that we understand that it's already a packaged product because if a company is packaging in plastics, what is that doing? Like that, those plastics are getting into your pet's food for sure. I personally don't love um, when anything is packaged in plastics, but it is very hard to find you know, uh, foods that aren't. So we kind of, it's, it's kind of one of those monsters that we have to live with and weigh our risks. And I think HPP or high pressure pasteurization is one of those risks for me. I'm not willing to take, but there's so much more about HPP that I don't love. And 
for uh, Dr. Will Falconer, he has a very compelling argument that it's not really raw anymore. Uh, really because we've killed everything. We've killed all the bacteria and that includes the good bacteria, which is what we want in a raw food. How high really is the pressure? Is really, 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 really high. So uh, there's a chart that he has in this download, which obviously if you're listening to the podcast, you're not going to be able to see it, but over eight tons per square inch crushes you, a human like a grape. The deepest part of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, the high pressure pasteurization is actually more pressure than that. So you would be crushed like a grape if you go down to the Mariana Trench. High pressure processing has even more pressure than that. More pressure than that. So what really is the concern with HPP? I'm going to read this directly from Dr. Will, um, from his, his download and his, obviously you're going to hear my voice, but it's his voice, um, that I'm, I'm reading. So it says, why all the concern with HPP? Well, as you might guess, if there were any bacteria in that packaged raw food, when it went into this high pressure environment, they wouldn't make it. Their little cell walls would cave in like those of your leaky, diving bell in short order. See, this is him talking, not me. I wouldn't write that. <laughs> um, but anyway, but that's good, right? I mean, killing that salmonella helps keep us safe. Well, let me suggest the outcome of all this pressure on food, the stuff we feed our dogs to make them healthy and vital is not wholly good. Sure, the, the bacteria got wiped out, but what about the meat and other valuable good things in there? How did they fare? As you might guess, the food is significantly changed from this super high pressure experience. One, enzymes, those lively little molecules that are present in raw food and help the consumer digest, are lost. Enzymes are one of the reasons raw food is so good for your dog. Lose them and she'll have to use her own enzyme stores to break down the food. Two, other proteins besides the enzymes are denatured by this this much pressure. In other words, they no longer bear any resemblance to prey. The protein your dog or a wolf has genetically evolved to eat over millennia. Franken protein, anyone? Three, the good bacteria that would help add to the defenses of your dog's gut flora population are wiped out along with the E. coli, salmonella, and any other disease-causing bad boys. And four, reportedly, flavor, texture, and color are all marred in HPP processing. And here's a crazy finding. And this is what I really wanted to get across to you um, with this HPP, not just, oh, well, it's not really raw because some people are like, okay, I don't want really raw. Fine. I, I don't know why, but fine. Here's the crazy thing. There are now bacteria who've survived this pressure and they have reproduced and passed on that mutation. And just like we've had super bugs from the overuse of antibiotics, we now have strains of salmonella that will not likely be killed by HPP. No, it's not enough pressure to kill these elite strains of Herculean bacteria. So companies are now adding high heat and even radiation to the pasteurization process, which as you can guess, further tortures the starting material and maybe even brings the packaging plastic chemicals into the dog's raw food. So mm, yeah, no, th there has to be a better solution, right? There absolutely is. And that's why I am very particular about the foods that I bring into my home for my pets. I made a mistake at one point. Um, I bought some food from my local healthy pet food store and I wasn't I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't at the top of my game. I, I knew this particular brand did HPP on their poultry. So I would only buy the beef. I'm not buying the chicken and turkey because I knew they HPP'd it. Now, I accidentally bought a chicken. I just was grabbing bags and I accidentally bought a chicken. Now, is it the end of the world? Absolutely not. But for me, Kim, my dog, got diarrhea. I know that she doesn't do well on that. Her body knows it's not the same thing, doesn't recognize it as the same food that she normally eats. So it upset her, her digestive system. So um, I, I, we, we fed it for a little while. And then I was like, I'm not doing this to her. She's, she has diarrhea. And once I realized that it was an HPP food, I stopped feeding it. And 
I mean, I, I didn't know what else to do with it. I threw it away. I'm, I'm, what else am I going to do? But um, there are better solutions. And the companies that I look for are do are not doing HPP. Um, one thing is that uh, companies start with human grade, high quality meats. Uh, if you're making raw dog food, odds are the cheaper the raw meat source, the more likely you'd be able to find bacterial contamination. So high quality human grade meats, that's what I'm looking for. Maintain high quality hygienic standards um, in your facility. So if you are a raw food company, we're looking for high quality. We're looking for really high standards of hygiene. Um, Keep the workspaces chilled. So the lower the temperature, the better. Wipe down surfaces, right? And this is all really, really simple stuff. And here's the thing. There are companies that will test their product to make sure it doesn't have, you know, the nasty bugs in it, the salmonella and E. coli. Um, and then there are other companies that are using, or this is kind of a new thing. Most companies are doing testing um, that aren't doing HPP, but kind of a newer thing is bacteriophages. So bacteriophages are interesting because, okay, so a bacteriophage is a strange sounding virus they are viruses that only attack certain strains of bacteria. So, for instance, you can have a virus in the bacteriophage class that only attacks salmonella. So, bacteriophages are literally bacteria eaters. And so, companies can start using this new technology, which I think is really great. I don't personally have such a huge issue with it. I've, I've never had an issue with salmonella or E. coli with my pets. Um, I'm very, I wash my hands. I, I wash my surfaces down really well. Um, my dogs and my cats don't have an issue with it. Their digestive systems are shorter and more acidic. They're designed to handle these types of bacteria a lot better. Um, the real reason we're so concerned with salmonella is because humans can get it from handling the food. Uh, but if you are careful, then, you know, likely won't get it. So that's kind of the, the viewpoint I have on HPP. And I was really happy to get this download from Dr. Will because it kind of outlines exactly, you know, what I was thinking and, and, and what I had been telling people for a long time, but now have a, a better way of getting it across to them. Today's episode is brought to you by the Furry Family Coach Dog Training. Train your dog in the comfort of your own home and on your schedule with video instruction from me. Learn the foundations of training, teach basic cues to your dog, and explore solutions to behavioral issues all inside of this video-based online training course. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to see you on the inside. So we've talked about HPP. Now let's talk a little bit about mushrooms. Now mushrooms are kind of a hot topic and I I think there's a huge, huge, like more and more companies are coming out with their own mushroom supplements. And whether that is in liquid form or powdered form, it, it I personally prefer a liquid form as long as it doesn't have a nasty taste to it. Um, but when we're adding powder to our dog's food, it can quickly become like a muddy, goppy, like, quicksand, right? So if we're adding a lot of powders to it, that's why I, you know, I don't, I don't love doing that. Some companies are doing capsules like doc, Dr. Ruth Roberts. Um, so I just wanted to tell you, there are three companies right now. Two of them are liquid. One of them is a capsule. Uh, and that capsule is from Dr. Ruth Roberts. These companies I love and trust and uh, I think the way they are doing mushrooms is heads and tails above how other companies are doing them. So let's talk a little bit about, um, first, Mycobiome is from Adored Beast Apothecary. And I just have their turkey tail mushroom uh, pulled up. And all of the, anything I'm talking about today, I will have linked in the show notes for you. So make sure on your podcast app, you're, you're checking the description. Um, so the turkey tail mushroom from which is under the label mycobiome. You can get this from Adored Beast Apothecary. Benefits are slowing the aging process, supporting gut health, fighting oxidative stress, 
preventing and aiding and fighting cancer. That's a big one. Managing inflammation and supporting the immune system. So compared to most powders, triple liquid extracts contain a a range of full spectrum compounds featuring both water soluble, uh, for example, example, polysaccharides like beta glucans and alcohol soluble compounds like antioxidants such as triterpenoids. I hope I said that right. Big words, guys, big words, triterpenoids, ensuring access to all the beneficial properties mushrooms have to offer. So in contrast, of course, you can see at Dr. Ruth Roberts, she has a mycopause eight blend mushroom supplement, which is um, a capsule. These capsules are a full spectrum mushroom blend, uh, a reishi blend, chaga, lion's mane, cordyceps blend, maitake, shiitake, agaricus, and turkey tail. So she's combining everything in one uh, capsule to give your dog. It says one serving contains a clinically relevant amount, which is 225 milligrams of each mushroom by utilizing the whole mushroom parts and the extracellular compounds that they naturally produce. Mycopause possesses a wide range of beneficial actions, including the support of a healthy immune response, a healthy response to stress, cardiovascular health, and detoxification. So I think mushrooms, again, are kind of a hot topic right now. People are getting all into mushrooms. And so I think um, having some places to go, resources where you feel very comfortable and confident that they are giving you the absolute best product possible is really important. So we've got the mycobiome from Adored Beast Apothecary, which we've just talked about, mycopause from Dr. Ruth Roberts. The third one on my list is from Your Natural Dog. They have mushrooms for dogs and she has, uh, this is Angela Ardolino. She has um, multiple different, so there's one for vitality. There's the one that's called breathe, which helps the res- uh, respiratory system. And there's another one for clarity for, you know, supporting brain function. So I'm just going to pull up the vitality one and talk to you a little bit about that. Vitality is a blend of naturally grown mushrooms. This formula was designed to help support the dog dealing with cancer autoimmune disease, liver issues, and respiratory issues. Each mushroom is hot water triple extracted from the fruiting bodies of fungi cultivated and wild harvested in North America. Where are mushrooms come from? Mushrooms are bioaccumulators, absorbs toxins from polluted air and environment. So we searched for mushrooms grown in their natural habitat in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. It is important to source mushrooms from an area that is least likely to be impacted by environmental toxins, which might be absorbed by the mushrooms. So if you guys remember back to the episode with Angela Ardolino, she was talking about this. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, pause this one, go back, listen to that episode because, oh my goodness, It is a wealth of information, both on CBD and mushrooms for dogs. And she was talking about how mushrooms and the hemp plants are both bioaccumulators. So that's really, really important to know. And I love the transparency um, that Angela brings to both CBD dog health and uh, your natural dog. Okay, so the ingredients of the Vitality Blend for your natural dog, a proprietary water extract of turkey tail, reishi, shiitake, maitake, chaga, artist conch, and red belted conch with astragalus root and ashwagandha. So the additions of astragalus root and ashwagandha are also really important. Um, and the ashwagandha specifically is very calming for our dogs. Turkey tail mushrooms have been known to help support cancer fighting, healing after injury, regulating blood pressure, reproductive health, kidney and urinary health, supporting the immune system, promote healthy, normal cell growth and healthy inflammation responses. Um, reishi mushrooms are known to help support anxiety and stress, immune system, Uh, a healthy histamine response. So for those of us with dogs with allergies, um, even if they are, you know, 
and um, seasonal environmental uh, healthy histamine response is important. The body's ability to cope with oxidative stress, healthy liver functioning, healthy cardiovascular system function, the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth, a healthy inflammation response, radiance, and physical slash energetic warmth. Shiitake mushrooms are known to help support optimal digestive functioning, the body's ability to regulate blood, blood pressure, liver health, the body's innate immune system, the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth, a healthy inflammation response. Maitake mushrooms have been known to help support healthy sugar metabolism, the body's ability to regulate blood pressure, the female reproductive system, the body's innate immune system, the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth. We're seeing some of these things over and over, right? Because they all are really good at a lot of things and then some of them specialize in other things. Um, healthy normal cell growth, a healthy inflammation response. Chaga has been known to help support the body's ability to cope with oxidative stress, the body's natural ability to regulate blood pressure, the body's ability to protect itself from damage caused by harmful chemicals, uh, a reduction in our exposure to harmful microbial, the body's innate immune system, the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth, and a healthy inflammation response. Artist conch has been known to help support the body's innate immune system, respiratory strength, healthy skin, a reduction in our exposure to harmful microbial and viruses, the body's response to pain, healthy sugar metabolism, that one's important for uh, diabetics, right? Supports healthy mucus production and elimination, the body's natural, I need that one right now, <laughs> the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth, a healthy inflammation response. Red belted conch has been known to help support the body's own natural ability to heal itself, a healthy histamine response, again, for allergies, optimal digestive functioning, uh, healthy inflammation response in the gut, uh, the body's innate immune system, the body's natural ability to promote healthy normal cell growth, and a healthy inflammation response. So this particular blend for me is at the top of the list, um, which is why I saved it for last. If I had to pick the next one, it would be um, the uh, Mycobiome from Adored Beast. But I really, really, really love the blends from Your Natural Dog. So um, that's just my opinion. Uh, you can, you know, take this information and choose what works best for you and, and your dog, of course. But I these were, these, these were the topics that I wanted to talk to you about this week. And I hope that in talking to you this week, it wasn't too terribly difficult for you to listen to. I know I'm kind of nasally, I'll, I'm still congested from being sick. I did bring COVID home <laughs> with me from Italy. I, I quarantined myself, of course, uh, because I didn't want to get anybody else sick, but also I was just too tired to go anywhere. <laughs> um, and I'm just, uh, even though I am negative, I am still having some symptoms, which are primarily congestion and a little bit of coughing. So um, I'm sure I will uh, edit out any coughs that I may have had <laughs> while I recorded this, but if I missed any, I apologize. Um, these are just kind of the thing, some of the things that I've been thinking about this week when I was thinking about what am I going to talk to you about? What am I going to talk, like what, is, what are some things that are so important that I, I have to put them on the podcast for you? So I hope that is helpful. I hope this gives you some information to then go and do the best you can for your pets. Um, I'd love to hear from you. If I haven't already, if you if you don't haven't reached out to me, I don't know why not. I'm here. I'm accessible. Reach out to me on the socials. Um, if you're not a Patreon supporter, I don't know why not. You can go to patreon.com slash Jessica Fisher and join for as little as a dollar a month. Um, I do my best to post uh, content over there at least once a week. I have been kind of off my game uh, lately from being in Italy and being sick, but uh, I do normally post over there at least once a week. So yeah, you can, that's just extra content, but you're also helping to support me continuing to bring this podcast to you. Make sure I know it's in, I don't, I kind of insert them throughout uh, different episodes, but join, join the uh, online dog training course. You can get it for just $7 for the first month because you're a podcast listener. That is uh, something that no one else gets, only our podcast listeners. So I hope this uh, was helpful for you. Let me know. Again, reach reach out to me on the socials. I would love to hear from you. I'd also love to ha have you over on Patreon. With that, I'm going to end today's episode. Let me know what you would like to hear in the next solo episode. I have a lot more um, 
interviews coming up, which are incredible with some really wonderful people. So I know those are always fun and exciting, but let me know what you want to hear on more solo episodes. So I will uh, go ahead and end today's episode and give your pets some extra love for me until next week. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training the furry family coach. Just go to the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's the furry family coach.com and use code podcast at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, oh, oh.